Hi everyone, just tinkering with some engines here, uh, trying to get them a little cleaned up. I got a lot of balsa dust on them, even though they're on the shelf away from here, it collects and sticks to the, the oils on the engines. Uh, what my dilemma is here, the reason I'm cleaning them up, is I'm trying to decide on what plane to put what engine on. And I've kind of made some decisions along the way, but not quite settled on a project okay so I'll, I'll just rattle these off real quick and tell you what they are it's a dl50 uh, it's been run twice it's not even broke in yet uh, i don't know what i'm going to put that on no clue <laughs> this is a zdz60 uh, i believe that's going to go on my top flight mustang a giant skill mustang i got when it's still in the kit, I think you've seen me working on it before. But I think that might be the motor for that. This old thing, I mean, this, this is a way back engine. Uh, 70s or early 80s, I believe more like 70s. I believe it's a, a Maloney. I got this from a buddy of mine. Didn't have any use for it. I kind of collect uh, engines when I can. But this one supposed to be uh, a 100 and it has tons of compression never ran it I'd like to run it just to see if it runs if it does who knows it might end up on an old airplane but uh, that's kind of cool up front here is a little OS Max 10 I know where that's going I got a old uh, I can't remember the name of the company that made it I have an old kit of dirty birdie 10 and uh, that will go on there. I have this uh, Sato 90 and a Sato 90 twin. One of these two are going to go on an old red box uh, top flight zero that it's three quarters done. I got a lot of airplanes three quarters done. <laughs> I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick. I'm going to test run them, see which one has a more, the most realistic sound versus the most pull. I'm not sure which one. Uh, here is a Ross, uh, a Rossi 90. I have a Dave Platt short kit for a, uh, 88 inch, uh, Spitfire. And it calls for this engine. Uh, Platt designs his basically for glow engines. And, uh, on the plans it shows this engine with the tune pipe coming in the fuselage and exiting out the rear somewhere. So I thought maybe that will go in there, but I don't know. I might use a DLE 35 or something along those lines as an upgrade. And this is a Rossi 61. I bought this for a pattern ship that I no longer have. Uh, went on a Carrari. If you, anyone can remember the old MK kits, uh, it was a Carrari. It was a fiberglass version. It's Rossi 45. I've flown these on Cougars. Uh, couple of my own designs and uh, this one is stuck this one's gonna go in the crock pot with the antifreeze and boil overnight loosen her up but I know that's a good engine uh, and here is a replacement engine for one of my 7.5 ducted fans I got about three or four of these they're all good they all run and uh, just in case I have a problem with the uh, one of these I got a brand new one to go in there just switch the heads and it'll be good to go but this is going to go on an f86 early version of the jet hanger hobbies uh, before turbines came out before electrics came out we had nitro ducted fans and that's actually for that model I have I don't know maybe three of those or something like that laying around here OS Max 91 on a Dynamax fan unit. I don't have the spinner on it yet, but this is going to go in that Byron's F86 you see me sanding on. I also have a, uh, I think you've seen it too, uh, a Byron's MiG-15. I got three of these, so I need to use them on something. I don't want them to go to waste and uh, get old and ruined from age. I'd rather blow them up in an airplane <laughs> but that's what these are going to go in into is those uh, Byron 
models. Here is an older OS Max 15 ducted fan with pull start. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, wore out the airplane it was in. It was in a, <laughs> a real dog of a Kyosho F86 I was just playing with. And uh, that thing, this barely had the power to fly it around. I mean, it was a dog. And uh, after a while, I got tired of it, ripped the engine out, hung the plane in the back room, and that's where it sits. This is one I'd like to put on a plane. This is brand new in a box, never been run. Super Tiger 2000. Got to find something to put that on because that would be an awesome sounding engine. It, it's a nitro engine. But uh, that's what I've been doing, trying to figure out what goes where, uh, cleaning up the, some of the dust that's on them that's accumulated over the last many years. <laughs> so let me get these out of the way. I'll put them all back on the shelf and cover them up and uh, bring out the Cougar. And we'll start the flow coat on the wings and the fuselage. There's really not much to show on the, on the coating, so that's going to go pretty quick. The part that might go a little longer is the sanding. Um, because I can't finish the video until I'm done sanding the whole thing. And I'm not gonna show the whole thing, I'm gonna show the parts of doing the fuselage, just maybe one side uh, with the flow coat, and I'll do the other side off camera. And I'm gonna do one panel of the wing because all four sides are basically the same. And uh, we'll, uh, when I do a panel, uh, that's when we'll stop and I'll probably take 24 hours for all the stuff to dry up real hard and then tomorrow or the next day I'll come back to it and sand it all out and uh, show you some of that and once that's done it's going to be assembling the cockpit onto the fuselage and uh, getting it ready to uh, spray with some epoxy paint oh before that some of you probably, probably realize that I didn't put the tank in it yet and I didn't put the aileron servo in so we'll probably have to deal with those before the paint goes on. That's not a big deal, but uh, you'll probably want to see that. So if you hold on, I'm going to run the intro. I want to get this stuff off my bench, and we'll get started. Kicks, I think, are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut. Actually, by blasting, painting, uh, as you roll it forward, kind of press it like as hard as a brick bed. One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside the line. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been a whole day. I was called away yesterday to do a wiring job on a pole barn. So I spent the day running 220 out to the pole barn, putting up a fuse box and outlets and lights. And so I'm back. I went ahead and mixed up my uh, polyester resin. I didn't put any hardener in it yet. I mixed up an ounce. Got my brush and my jar cleaner. Just need to get rid of the squirt. And uh, before I mix that all up, what I did is I took a Scotch Brite pad. Okay, and the idea is to rub the Scotch Brite pad on here like this. You get the whole thing, and it picks up the wax left behind by the finishing resin. You'll see shiny spots, and if you rub it, you can see it's turned white on the pad and it, that means it's picking up the the wax on the surface wherever you see a shiny spot just give it a rub like that and uh it'll you'll see it get uh kind of dull and that will let you know that you have pretty much the, all the wax off of that area and i already done most of the wing i just left a little bit here in the center to do do the wing tips this airline is finished, so I really don't have to worry about that. I already have a flow coat on that. I did that, I don't know, several videos ago. This one, I haven't done. It still needs a flow coat. I think that's just about it. You got the idea. I'm gonna mix this up. I 
really well. Hopefully I don't splash it all over everything. Okay. There we go. Now, it doesn't really matter where you start. I like starting in the middle, but you don't have to. And you just brush on a generous portion over the whole thing. You can tell when you got enough on there, it starts to get nice and glossy. All the brush marks will start to disappear. And you want the coat to be fairly even. You don't want it to ruin. You know, you don't want so much on there that it runs. Just keep on going until you use up the whole cup. Wings, they're dead easy. Absolutely, positively the easiest part of the whole model to do. Because it's flat. You know, you don't have any really major curved surfaces to go around. Um, where your resin will get really runny and go all over the place so it makes it a lot simpler if you hold your surface that you're doing on an angle you can see where you missed and where you need to put more or less or whatever and on these plywood mounts I didn't put any epoxy on that so I'm gonna put a light coat of polyester on there polyester resin on there just to seal it up really well and on the inside wherever there is no styrofoam present because this will eat styrofoam like it's nobody's business okay and like I said before the idea is to get the, the contents of the cup out as fast as you can onto your surface That way it won't set up on you in the cup. I mean, it doesn't matter if it sets up on you in the cup. It's just that you don't want to waste material. Well, it gets expensive if you keep doing it. <laughs> so far, I don't have any problems with fish eyeing. It looks pretty smooth. And you can probably see it's getting shiny. I can't really see the monitor too well at the moment. But an ounce should get you all the way down your wing. might find yourself dipping your brush quite often that's just the way it is Okay, almost done. If you put it on a little bit heavy, don't really worry about it because you're going to come back and sand this anyways. And if you're a little light, you can sand it. And uh, if you want, you can put a little bit more on after you're done. You might find it not necessary because you can fill in whatever doesn't get covered really well with your primer when you paint. Sometimes that's uh, the best way to go. So all you're doing now is filling the weave. That's really all you're doing. 
And it's adding strength, of course. Get my leaning edge. Look for dry spots or heavy spots for that matter. Because I have a tendency just to hit it with the brush again and take off any real heavy spots. At the angle I'm looking at it, I can't see really what I'm doing that well. So I gotta hold it up. Maybe you can't see it now, but it's necessary for me to see it at the moment. Okay. That is just about it. There it is. You can see it's nicely done, sealed up real good. I got a little bit left, so I'm going to head over to this side and just keep on going. And when I run out, then I'll stop because I'm just about out of out of resin here. But since it's usable, I'm going to keep using it. I don't want it to go to waste. I guess it would be a good opportunity to show how I do the aileron. And I leave it down like this. Just let it hang. Let's see if I can slide some of this stuff over with the wingtip. Uh, I'll let it hang. And I'll just cover the aileron barely to the inside not enough to make it goopy you can actually run your brush like this put a real light coat in there that's what i like doing anyways and i'll take when i dip it i'll put the the excess well the majority of it on the aileron and then i'll come in here and i'll get the inside of the aileron like that I don't know how far I'm going to be able to stretch this. Let's see, I didn't get the aileron very well, I see. There we go. Kind of like doping an airplane in a way. You put the final coat of dope on back in the old days with the brush. Kind of lay it on evenly but heavy at the same time kind of the same thing well, I'm not gonna make it totally pass the wheel well like I was hoping but that's okay heavy in spots take some of that off and come on down the wing really guys this is all there is to it okay that's all I got I know I buggered up the, the end here when I push those cans but really don't matter I can get that when I do the top I can see some light spots here Hopefully I have enough to fill that. Oh yeah. And that's it. So what I'm gonna do is clean my brush. And uh, when I get all this wing done, I'll come back with the fuselage and we'll put a flow coat on the fuselage. So give me a second, I'll be right back. Just so you know, I've already done this, this side on, on my side here. It's all finished, but I'll show you on the other side. Just need to mix up a little bit of catalyst into my resin. I'll be ready to go here in a second. Make sure I got it good and mixed.
All right. This is probably going to be a little awkward for me to do. So I'm going to stand up and give it a shot. I'm going to start back here. I've already did the whole elevator. And you've seen the rudder, so that's, that's not a big deal. Just do a nice coating on the horizontal stabilizer. You can see I did a little bit up here already, too. I just had to use up what was left in my cup. And you just want to put a nice, generous coating. I'm sure you heard me say that several times already. And you need enough on there to fill the weave and not leave any dry spots. This side over here is still wet, so you might see me uh, sticking to it just a bit. Okay. Nice, even, smooth coat over the whole thing. Go up here to the rudder. Doing the bottom first like this, uh, so I have some place to come down to without having a lot of excess. So if you have a lot of excess, it's going to drip down onto your horizontal stabilizer. Unless, of course, you have it rotated, which I usually do, but in this case, because I am taping, well, I guess you can't call it taping anymore, but recording. See, back in the days of VHS, it was taping. Or hi, hi eight. <laughs> but uh, it was a drip. I'll get this vertical stabilizer. Hope I'm not too much in your way. This is awkward. Okay, getting a good fill on the weave. Here's a fairing. Start at the top of the fairing. Work my way forward. And I'm not going to go past my line. Just kind of get it nice and coated. That looks pretty good. Try not to get it on too heavy. If I get it on too heavy, I mean, uh, it's just a lot of sanding for me. Okay. Not going to talk too much because I've pretty much uh, explained how it goes. It's just a matter of putting it on. Working my way down to the fairing. I usually have this propped up in the air, but I don't have anything to prop it up with today. All my stuff is in use for, at the moment. Okay, here we go. Above the wing saddle, heading for the front, heading towards the firewall. Okay, right next to the where the canopy is going to sit. Pretty good. 
see a dry spot on this I'm gonna have to touch real quick there we go that looks better okay now I'm gonna to try to pick this thing up I don't know how I'm gonna do it without getting goop all over me all right I'll do it like this I don't know can you see that okay I guess you can I can't but that's all right because whatever I don't get here I'll get later underneath the stabilizer I'm putting a lot on there because I can't see what I'm doing but I'm gonna spread it out thin so it won't matter too awful much like that now I'll work my way back up towards the fairing where I started I can kind of see the weave from here and it looks like it's filling in pretty good that's the name of the game is to fill the weave no more no less almost got it a little bit more right up in here a little bit more right in here I see a dry spot right there and right there a little bit of excess on the fairing okay I think I think that is it looks pretty good I'll take the motor mounts off later uh, I like using them as a handle why it dries it's not a big deal and uh, when she's good and dry I'll take the the motor mounts off and I'll put polyester resin on the firewall and then I'll call that good and when that's done uh, well I still have to do the bottom side but I can't do that obviously because the top is all wet and I can't flip it over so that's just the way it goes <laughs> in the world of glassing hurry up and get it on and wait and wait and wait <laughs> now it, this will be dry by tomorrow it's not a big deal I need to put a little bit right in here slide a little bit down inside it's not gonna hurt my hinges or anything because they've all been lubricated if you remember hinging the surfaces uh, put that petroleum jelly in there and heat it up with a match and let it seep in that works pretty well Ooh, I'm getting it on my sleeve oh no but that's all I can show you for now uh, when I come back let's see what will we do I guess we'll start sanding and once the sanding is done install the cockpit the canopy uh, aileron servo has to go in fuel tank then we'll put the wing on and finish up uh, the fairing and I don't know if you noticed but I took a piece of 80 grit and flatten this edge on the fairing whoops didn't want to do that and I'll explain why I did that uh, when we get to it it's not important right now but it will be see I missed some spots on this side okay I guess I'll shut the camera off and let this sit um, It'll probably sit for at least 24 hours sometime tomorrow and I'll finish up the bottom as fast as I can so I can uh, get to the sanding part and then this in the part 20 series will be over with pretty much and the sanding is pretty easy uh, you just basically use some 60 to 80 grit level out your polyester resin 
and then uh, once you do that you're pretty much ready for priming and uh, that's pretty much all there is but like I said I want to put the canopy on cockpit in and uh, all that good stuff but I'm not gonna sand it with the canopy on because that's that makes it rough you, you start worrying about scratching your canopy and all that fun stuff so I guess I'm gonna go eat dinner so I'll be back in a bit now the wings dry a fuselage is dry it's all done all the and you can see I already started sanding on a little bit all this nice polyester resin dust got it pretty much smooth out there are some spots in here that uh, need to be filled and you can tell when you sand it you'll have the dull spots where the sandpaper hit and then you'll have this shiny spot I don't know if you can see that or not um, maybe I'll zoom in on it and you can s I'll try to show you some of these shiny spots there's not very many but this is the major one right here so give me a second I'm gonna zoom in and kind of show you that well you can't see it too well but there's a shiny spot right in here uh, I'm trying to get the get it to reflect a little bit but there is one there's a spot in here and there's one right here you can probably see that one better it's a little different color but it's a little dip and that's gonna have to be filled with no big deal you don't have to worry about that so I just wanted to show you that you will have some shiny spots in there that will need to be filled now what I'm using is some 80 grit sandpaper you can use 60 grit but I like 80 grit works for me better and what I do is I'll take it and cut it into pieces like this kind of cut it in quarters fold it up make a little pad out of it like that put this one here and uh, then you just commence to sanding you just uh, can just go at it and it'll start to load up your paper right away and what it's doing is this is the wax buildup a lot of its wax and sometimes you can knock it off of there but a lot of times you can't you're gonna burn through a lot of these pieces um, maybe three to four per wing panel but the idea is to level it and you can hear it's, it's pretty rough right up in here it's it's kind of bumpy keep switching your pad around and just keep sanding and it's gonna make a lot of a lot of dust and that's one thing I like about uh, I like about the polyester resin is you can sand it and you can level it to a point but you don't want to take it down to a point where they where you get it into the weave if you do that then you might have to go back over it and lay another coating of glass uh, polyester resin over top of the fiberglass and all that's gonna do is add weight because that's one more layer okay and you never get it all the way down perfectly level where you want it it'll look level but you got that extra layer on top so you don't want to do that try to avoid that so keep your sandpaper moving you don't want to stay in one spot otherwise you will eat right through the polyester resin I'm seeing some shiny spots in here but that's mainly dense in the wood and I figured I'd record through the sanding so you know approximately how long it takes to sand out a wing or at least a quarter of the wing it's the only reason I'm letting it run otherwise I'd cut away and come back and it'd be done you can go lengthwise on the wing you can go around in circles or whatever uh, it's up to you because it all has to be sanded out anyways and there'll be primer on top
hard part is getting around the wheel wells. Okay, it's not really cutting anymore. It's kind of sliding around. Got to change the angle of my pad. To do a, a, a quarter of a wing, it takes about 10 minutes or so. Not incredibly long. A lot of guys don't like the sanding part. It's hard, you know, and they, their arm gets tired or whatever. But to me, it's, uh, I think it's one of the best parts of doing this because you're the one that's making the surface. You're not letting the paint make the surface, per se. Because whatever you have here is what's going to be on your primer, okay? What your primer is going to sit on. And when you sand the primer out the same way, you're going to sand the primer right back down to the, the glass. And whatever's left will be in the little indentations, the little shiny spots. And you keep doing that. You keep adding on and sanding it off until all the shiny spots are gone and the primer is laid on perfectly level and there's no dips or nothing. Usually it takes one, maybe two coats. And if you have one that's a little bit uh, more than you can sand out or you have to put on so much primer, it's going to take forever. Uh, spot glazing putty takes care of that and that's one application and is good to go. So let me keep going here. And I'll get more into glazing putties when we get closer to uh, putting on the primer. Okay, I'll move this wing a little bit. Now all I'm doing is flattening it out, making it smooth. Trailing edge. And for those of you who thought that this 60 grit is going to or this 80 grit's gonna burn right through it real fast. Well, I barely scratched the surface, as you can see right here. It's just scratches and a lot of shiny stuff in there yet. Um, let me tip it up. Maybe you can get a better idea. Now, you can see where I didn't get it all yet. Right in here, it's a little shiny. Shiny up in here. But I also have to do the Aerolon. This is the Aerolon I didn't finish. So, let me get that real quick. Some of you guys are saying, oh, I don't like doing this because it makes so much dust and stuff. Yeah, it does, but making a mess is half the fun of making a model, you know? <laughs> I guess that's why guys go to electric so they can't stand cleaning up the mess of, of the glow fuels. But that was half the fun.
And I got a little bit more to go here. It's hard to get the end of the airline sometimes because it's it's flexing and moving and you don't want to damage it. So you gotta take your time. Kind of like that. There it is. So if you had stopwatches, <laughs> now you know. Okay, there it is. Um, I don't have anything to wipe it off yet, but what I'll do is I'll probably go over it with some, uh, I don't know, 220, maybe 320, give it a nice level smoothness to it, get rid of some of the scratches. Um, the scratches will be gone anyways when you're primer, but the way I see it is if you keep on putting primer on to fill these scratches, and if you can get them out with some 320, that's just less weight in the long run. So that's my thoughts on it. You might not think the same way and you might just decide that you'd rather just fill it all up with primer and get it over with. That's fine. But on a model this small, I'm, I'm always concerned about weight. When I glass, that little some shiny spots here that I want to get rid of. There we go. All right, good enough. I'm gonna put this out of the way. Showed you the quarter of the wing. The whole wing's the same thing. Just go around the wing and eventually you'll be done. It won't take that long. So let me grab the fuselage. I usually start at the top and work my way down just on the kind of because that's the way I do it. <laughs> <laughs> no other reason than that. And you remember my overlap for my glasses on the top here. So that will be all smoothed out. Actually, I can't even feel the seam. Okay. So I'll start up here. And you can kind of hear the, the cloth, what sounds like cloth, but it's not really the cloth. It's the buildup of the couple of layers of resin and the cloth weave kind of builds up from there. And that, that sound will go away. And you can see high spots, low spots. I don't know, maybe you can't because the lighting's not the best in the world. But uh, that's what I'm working on right now is getting a kind of a run out of it right up here. Okay, that takes care of the turtle deck, I think, pretty much. A little bit more to do here. And then I gotta fold this to get down into my fairing. Which is not too hard. And since it's a small spot, you don't wanna over sand it. Cause you'll, you will burn through the cloth doing this real quick. Okay, get the top lip. Now I'm starting the sides. See, now this is getting burned out here, this paper. All right, time for a new piece, I think. Grab a new pad. And I will get going on it. 
some more. And really guys, that's all there is to it. Just sand it until you get it smooth. I'd like to find a rag here, but I don't have one. Oh yeah, I do. Here we go. Not the cleanest in the world, but you can see where I've stopped and started. I don't know, maybe you can't. It's awful tough with the lights, but anyways, that's all you do. So I'm gonna get busy. I'm gonna sand all this out, and when I get done, I'll be back, and uh, I believe what we'll do, since I'm right here, instead of putting the canopy on first, I think we'll work on the wing fillet and finish that off, and uh, then go on to probably the canopy. Uh, let's see, maybe put the aileron servo in the wing and put the fuel tanks in and once it's sanded and all this little stuff is done it's it's time to shoot some paint and uh i'd like to do that before the snow flies i wanted to fly this this year but it didn't happen so i want it done out of my way so i can work on something i don't know something different bigger <laughs> but i'm anxious to get this done i am kind of anxious to fly it because I love flying cougars, they're, they're a blast. You can make them go fast, you can make them go slow. So, all right, I'll quit jabbering. Uh, I'm gonna get busy on this. And when I'm done, I'll be back and we'll move on from there. The sanding's all done on the fuselage. And uh, just wanted to show you these blocks I put in. This is for the cowling, screw the cowling on. And I did that when I Put the polyester resin on the firewall and the holes you see in here I drilled to hold them on using this bamboo skewer and I just cut it up into little chunks about like that and uh, with a pair of side cutters and drilled the holes shoved them through and it goes all the way back through the hardwood past the uh, through the firewall and into the the triangular stock that surrounds the firewall on the inside of the fuselage if you remember that part of the build so it basically is nailing it to the firewall and nails the firewall to the triangular stock it's that's going to make it even stronger in the long run still got a little bit of holes in here um, i'll just fill those with polyester resin and micro balloon as i go it's not real important but i'll do that later notch it out the blocks out for the uh, <laughs> for the motor mount. There we go. And uh, still need to fill in the tank hole because I won't be using that. And now I believe I'm going to install the cockpit. I think I'll start with uh, the instrumentation cluster here get that set in I'm gonna use uh, medium CA so I'll just uh, put some on here I got a lot of gluing surface in here so I have to go to the edges and make a mess just on the edges just a little bit it's a one-time good deal you don't want to make a a misstep here and put it in the wrong place because that could be a problem okay get this guy down in the spot the paint lines give me a real good indication of where to set it just about like that he's down and in okay Next, I believe I'll put in the pilot, do the same thing. I'm going to use my old pilot. That one I'm, I made uh, just didn't come out the way I wanted it, so I'll just use this one. 
the old one since I got them cleaned up and repainted. And I'll put a generous bead on here. And it has a spot that he sits in. Kind of tight. Getting a glue mess here. That's okay. It's only a sport model. Nothing to really worry about. So he's down. He'll be dry in a little bit. And while that's drying, get the backrest put in. About like that. A little bit more glue here. Spread it out. I want it to really grab any kind of vibration will tend to break this kind of thing loose so you want to get a fair amount on there. I make it flow inside a little bit so when I flip it over it'll drain out and seal itself down. And it looks like right about there that's where it goes hold him down for a second okay now the fun part the hose this has to go in a hole here and it has to glue to his mask so this is going to be a little bit tougher I'm going to put the glue in the hole and a little bit on the end. Stick him down into the hole and stick him onto the mask. And there he is. That's it for the cockpit. Uh, I might as well get the canopy and glue that down where I'm at it. Be right back. Now it's time to glue on the canopy. And for that, I am going to use good old fashioned Sigment. I've been using Ambroid and Sigment for, I don't know, over 50 years. I got a used bottle I'm gonna take some out of. But out of all the glues I've tried and all these great canopy glues they got, I have found I haven't found anything that will hold as good as Sigment or Ambroid for that matter if Ambroid was still around. Well this one might be empty. So we'll go with the new one. I'm gonna mark with a with a pencil where it's supposed to go because some of the line is missing. Looks like most of it's there. Okay, whoa, got a glue glob going here. I'm just going to put it right on the edge of the framework for the canopy. The canopy rail, I guess you could call it. I don't mind if it oozes out to the bottom, but I don't want it oozing up to the top because that could look really ugly. And a bead going around the top. Starting from the front. All right, this is a one-time good deal. If you make a mistake with this kind of glue on a canopy, you're in serious trouble. I forgot to do the front, didn't I? But, whoa, boy, it's coming out in a hurry. Guess I'll have to smear that around. Use a toothpick here. All 
All right, good enough. Set it down where it's supposed to go. It's like that. Letting it ooze out the bottom and the sides a little bit. Just as long as nothing comes out the top. And you're probably wondering why I don't mind it coming out the sides. And the reason is I'll be putting a fairing around this canopy. But I'm going to get the excess off anyways. I'm not going to leave it a mess, of course. It's like that. All right. Very good. Clean up that little glob I made. And you're probably wondering how I'm going to hold it down. I'm just going to use some masking tape. This is painter's tape. You can use masking tape. I'm just going to hold it in the back and on the bottom sides. You don't have to re be in a real hurry with this kind of glue. It takes it a while to set up. And a piece over here. But the Sigment glue on these kind of canopies, you'll never have to worry about it popping off. Don't have to worry about water getting on it and loosening the glue. Because once this is on, it is forever on. Now to hold these sides, and you can see it kind of bubbles out. What I'm going to do is just use my pins. They'll be very close to the edge of the canopy. And it'll hold it in place. I'll use several of them. Well, that one's broke off. To keep the uniformity of the canopy. So it doesn't look like I stuck pins around it. But even if it did show, you wouldn't be able to see it because of the fairing I'm going to put on it. Just about done here. A couple more to, to be on the safe side. Looks pretty secure to me. A little bit right there. Maybe one right in there. Right in here. And all I'm doing is pushing the, the shaft of the pin against the canopy glass and then pushing down. And that's it. Well, that's as far as I can go for now. Uh, it looks like I'm getting close to my hour's worth of video, so I'm going to cut it off right here. And when we come, well, when I come back, I believe I will finish off the wing fairing. And uh, like I said, I, I sanded this fairing flat. It doesn't come down to a point. And you're probably wondering why, and I will show you on the next video. <laughs> so, uh, until then, have a good one. Mm -hmm.